The title of this message today is Behold the Love. Stand with me first. Father, in the name of Jesus, I empty myself of me that I stand before your people as an oracle of God, a living word, a, real, a rhema in the midst of your people. Holy Ghost, I empty myself of me, and I truly say teach and preach and glorify the Father and the Son in this moment of time. Touch lives like you've never touched them before. Quicken us and make us alive. I ask for this favor. There's been anything I've asked already, and let it be released now in the lives of these you have given us. I honor you and I praise you. And Lord, we expect the blessing from you because the blood, the blood has paid for all these things. Lord, touch us today. Bless this church. Bless this facility. Bless this couple who is coming today to be married. Oh Lord, let us behold the love. Oh Lord, show yourself to be alive today in every life that's under the sound of my voice. Let their ears ring till it down into their heart. Write it in their minds and place it in their heart. Be alive today, Holy Ghost, in each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So the title of our message today is Behold the Love. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's pitiful, but I'll accept it. Amen. So this is, this is part four of a continuation of Stir Up the Gift. And today we're going to talk about, begin to talk about the spirit of love. The spirit of love is, is, a, is a topic and a power that is exceeding us. It is, it, it, I, I will not be able to exhaust the resources and all that God has taught on his love. I'm only going to be able to do a little bit within a time period. Otherwise, I'll be on here for the, on this subject and on the spirit thereof for the next year. And I know y'all will stop coming to church and just ask for a recording. In the name of Jesus. So I will not stay on this much longer. But if you would, go with me to the book of St. John, chapter 3. As I begin to teach you on the spirit of love. I pray today that God will release the spirit of love in our hearts today that will ultimately change the world. And as I show you these things which God has already commanded us and released in us, that we just begin to activate it, we'll see the power of God release. You know one thing, faith worketh by love. Amen. And all of you who, who, were, who were blessed and anointed to do the task that you're set to do, especially if you're dealing with what you're doing in the church, you cannot be successful at ministering anything in the church unless you love God's people. If you don't love God's people, I just say the best ones, the good ones, the nice ones, the kind ones, the sweet ones. I'm talking about the disobedient, the unmanable, the ones who want to do their own thing, the ones who don't like you. You got to love all of them. If you don't love them, you, got, you are not affected. So I want to, get to add this other point that I want you to understand if I don't say anything else to, it, to you. You need to ask for God's love. You have to ask for it to be in its most uh, powerful manner in your life. You got to ask for it, especially your situation. And once he gives it to you, you're going to always have it. You may not use it, but you're going to always have it. Are you with me? Amen. Are you also with John 3.16? Now, we can say this, recite this without any, any effort, can we? Okay. So, it reads. Before I even get there. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That word perish is referring to the fact that you shall never die. You will always be in God's presence. They shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world, into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Why did God send Jesus Christ? He sent him to save the people by the love of God which he sent him with. God loved us so he sent his love child. God loved us so much he sent Jesus wrapped up in his love and Jesus did not come to condemn anybody. He came to save us, not to tear us down, not to judge us. It's easy to judge, folks. God wants us to be alive in him, alive in the love of Christ. Are you listening to me? Yes. So what the question is, since we're talking about the spirit, the spirit of, 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 of love, what is the opposite of love? Hate. 
Which do you have predominant in your life? Can you think of somebody you can hate? Is there more than one? And you're not walking in the spirit of love. The spirit of love will take you beyond those who should be hated. He, he, he will go beyond those who should be condemned in your life. Even the ones who you don't like. So that means you're not walking in the power of God. That means you're not where you should be. And you got to let it go. That's the only way you're going to get through this. You got to let it go. I see, I see children getting mad with their parents. Upset. Because they can't have their way. And those who I can, I want to talk to you. Who gave you the right to be mad at anybody? Who gave you the right to be upset with your parents? Do you buy the food that you eat? Do you have a house to go live in? Have you given birth to a child? Do you pay any bills? So what gives you the right to be mad? <coughs> Same thing with us adults. What gives you the right to judge somebody? Like you never had sex out of wedlock. There's some of us who have. Like you ain't never got high. Some people, some people didn't get high. But I heard my grandmama used to drink moonshine. What's the difference? Like you ain't never told a lie before in your life. And now that we got Jesus in our life, we got some, some control over ourselves if we want to. Now we can come back on everybody else. And, 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 and you can't stand cigarette smoke. As many as you used to smoke all the time. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I kind of catch myself when I condemn the, 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 the young people, the young boys with their pants hanging down. You know, that's cool. In our day, we had bell bottom tights with that, what that kind of knit they call that? Was that? Double knit, polyester knit. Everything was tight up in here. <laughs> you know, you might as well have your pants hanging down. Let's tell the truth. Go back and look at some of the pictures in the 70s. And I was all tight up in there. So how, how, how can we, honestly within ourselves, if you have the love of God, how do we have the right to come down on somebody? God had the right to wipe the whole earth out. But God so loved the world that he gave the best thing in heaven, his son. And you got to understand, the love of God, if you're going to have the spirit of love which God has given us, if you're going to have the spirit of love, it has to exceed what you think is right and to bless that person, love them, and receive them just like they are. I know my, a couple weeks ago, my mother was telling me, all the people one Sunday who came to visit her in, 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 in the nursing home and in the, in the rehab where she is, 82 years old. People from her old church, and some of the people that she named, I knew they were her enemies. I knew that some of them she didn't like. But you don't know what's going to happen at the end of your days. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how much possession you got, but you don't know who going to be wiping you in the nursing home. You don't know who's going to be the one that you're going to be glad to see, who you did not like. So you better understand, there is some life left living. And for everybody, all of us got to taste every season of life. You may not be in a nursing home. You may never get sick, but you don't know what's going to happen. You got to trust God and begin to walk in the power of his love. The only way you're going to walk in God's love is know what he said and let the Holy Spirit lead you. And he will direct you into the path of righteousness. He'll direct you into everything. And you and that person will come back together at the right time, whoever they may be. And he'll cause you to love them. And the ones who you never thought you loved, you never had to love, God said, go over there now and be good to them. Right. When they ask you for $3, Amen. give it to them. Amen. 
Yes. Not because they deserve it. Not because they can pay you back. And they're going to show tell you, man, let me have $3 and I'll pay you back on Friday. You ain't got no job. And you don't even have a check. And you want my $3 for Friday. And I'm going to hear you hearing this. Yes, Lord, I'll do it. Because the money you got ain't no guarantee Amen. that a check you get going to always come. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So the love of God is exceeding. Yeah. Nobody has a right to it, but God gives it to you, and he doesn't want anything back. Yeah. That's the other thing about the love of God. Don't give me something that you want back. Jesus says, if, if your enemies ask you for something, if he asks you for your shirt, give him the coat too. Yeah. That's what he said now. You got to understand that. So when you get the spirit of love, you're going to walk with it. But understand this. Why am I worried about three dollars? Why am I worried about a coat and a shirt? Because my father has everything. Amen. Do you need a million? If I got it, you can have it because he has all the money. Yeah. When you get that mentality, you'll understand that's how God is. He has all of it. And if he's my father, I'm already recognizing that I'm rich. If you understand that it came from him, he has more for you. It's just that simple. I understand many of us have seen a hard way up. But if you got, you're going to always have a hard way because you're living back in the hard way. you got to move in the new way. If you understand how God does this, you walk with him, not walk in your past, not walk in what you used to be, and stop walking in what you know. What you know brought you here. Amen. It is not going to take you past right here. You got to get a new mind. That's why he says, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that good and accept the will, will of God. You are a living sacrifice and what you got needs to go on the altar. Amen. Don't hold it. Release it. That you can have more. How can you, how can you increase in fruit unless somebody takes the fruit off your tree? Amen. The spirit of love. Now let me understand, let me help you understand this. God, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Understand this. The plan of salvation, man did not come up with that plan. The plan of salvation, the, exemplif the, the, the exemplification, now that's my new word, uh, God exemplifies his love. Oh man, okay? Man didn't come up with that because it is too easy. It is too loving, and it is too kind. The plan of salvation is far too powerful than what a man can come up with. <coughs> How many of you tried to work your cell phone to the, to the fullest? Got a cell phone. Only thing you know how to do most of us is dial. <laughs> and most of that, you can't get that right. And then, then that, that uh, thing where they record your messages and all that, you, we don't even use that right. And don't pull out the camera and don't go to Facebook. What is Facebook? How you use all that? Scared to touch it. God says, I got the answer to every question in the world. It's easy. Just believe. Can you just believe? Can you just receive my love? If you can't, just ask me for it. Lord, help me to get this power of love. Are oh, you listening to me? So, so, so man didn't come up with this because it was too easy, too loving, too kind, too powerful. It is out of, it, it, it is out of our natural scope of understanding. You and I cannot understand the love of God, but once you get it, you got it. Amen. It's a power that's exceeded. You know this had to be God. How can I look in the face of somebody who hurt me, disappointed me, did me wrong, and no longer feel the pain every time I look at them? One of us, one, many of us say, say, say this term to, to get around the concept. Uh, I don't hate them. Uh, I just don't like their ways. The devil is a lie. You still hate them. You can't stand them. Let, get, get in the right, the right group. I can't stand that side. You don't have the spirit of love with you. The spirit of love will make you look at the same one we used to hate. You will think about what they did and it won't hurt anymore. You, in fact, you just feel pity on them. I feel sorry for them. They don't know who they was messing with. I am a child of God. And it would be better for them if a, a stone was, was, was hung around their neck and they were thrown in the deepest sea than for them to mess with me. But so, Lord, I ask for mercy for them. I don't, I don't ask you to beat them nor destroy them. I ask you to let them go. Amen. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. 
but they know not what they do. They don't know they're messing with me. They don't know they're messing with the answer to their whole sin situation. But now, Lord, I ask your Father, forgive them. That's when you got the spirit of love, the power of love, the spirit of love on the inside of you. Are you listening to me? And so this, 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 this love of God is, is out of our, our natural scope of understanding. It is out of this world. It, is a, it took a supernatural God to create a supernatural salvation. Amen. Y'all walking with me? Amen. Amen. I, I want to go into that a little bit more, but I want to stop right there. Now, I want to ask you this question. I want to go into the spirit of love. Do you have the spirit of love? Go with me to Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to start it verse 14, but I, I want to explain something to you. When you and I have the spirit of something, it doesn't matter what it is. Listen to me closely. When you have the spirit of something, that means that you constantly have that presence, that feeling, and that response. And that response is first in every situation that's in your life. Let me say that again. If you have the spirit of something, that means you are uh, constantly, uh, you constantly have that presence in your life, that feeling in your life, that response in your life. And it is the, it's first in every situation. It's the first thing you do in every situation. It is the way you think and what comes out of you first. So if you have the spirit of fear, and the Bible says God did not give us the spirit of fear, so if you got that, that's the spirit of cowardliness, it is the fear of anxiety, it is the fear of the unbelief, it is the, it is the spirit of, uh, uh, of depression, it is the spirit of, 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 of pure for, unforgiveness and, and out of God's scope. It is cowardliness and you got to run in every situation. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. You got the spirit of love that's going to come out you Amen. in every situation. Amen. When you're walking down, down the street and people look at you, you're smiling. White, black, it doesn't make any difference. Because every time you see somebody, you see a possibility of one of your sisters and brothers walking in front of you, or you just want to say, I'm smiling at you, I ain't mad at you. Amen. Just walking down the street, Amen. how you doing? They're gonna look at you and say, what's, what's wrong with you? It's something about you. Are you a Catholic? <laughs> <laughs> you a part of the Christian Life Center of Titusville? Yeah. Are you listening to me? It, it, it comes out, you, you know people have joy in their life? And they got the spirit of joy. It's just flowing out of them. But I want to show you over here. Paul prayed two prayers in the book of Ephesians. And actually, it's the only two I've ever I, I recognized that he has prayed. And he talks about, this is the spirit of, 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 uh, uh, of love. It says, for this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven is, uh, is, is and the whole, whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Now, that we says be strengthened with might, that's power. That word right there means power. He says for us to be strengthened with power in our inner man. Who is your inner man? That's the born again man. Amen. That's the part of you that got born again. He says that, that part has to be strengthened with might. Let me show you a little bit further what he's praying and God has released in us already. He says, verse 17, uh, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, and that ye be rooted and ground in love. What is what you rooted and ground in? Love. love. He says that Christ dwell in your house like by faith, uh, because if you don't have uh, the spirit of Christ, you are not God's child. You've got to have the spirit of Christ, that God will operate with you and give you the inheritance of the promises in the name of Jesus, that you might be rooted and ground. Let me help you with that one. Please understand this. Put your pencil down. Write this. When you something is rooted and ground in something, it is the foundation of it. It is what you plant in that it may bring forth fruit. And so you got to plant the love of God in whatever you do. That's why in this church, we are trying to plant the love of God in this church. 
in your home. You got to plant the love of God. It's not your love, not the way your mama used to love you, but you got to understand, you got to plant God's love that it might grow and might the power of God will be released in it. That's why we were asking that, that, that we begin to change the outside. Because you've been to churches where you got mad with people in the parking lot. You've been to churches where you didn't like the way the usher, usher just said, here, take it. He won't go. Go sit over there. You know, you know the preacher, the preacher and the members are looking rough at each other. Everybody on the deacon and the mother's board over there just got their mouth all frowned after they just came out of conference meeting. And the nurses don't want to help nobody. Oh, they got the other but the nursing gear. How many of y'all know about the nursing gear? And, and, and the mother's seat and the deacon board seat. All right? Amen. The stewardesses. And, and, and the stewards. Amen. Look like they hate everybody. And when you got a problem, girl, come over here and let me talk to you. Where is the love? And so why we come to a place nowadays that people don't want to come to church because it, it ain't no love thing. I heard a man giving a testimony about his about the church and what they had in the church. And they had one lady who came and they, and they asked him, they said, they said, what do you like about our church? And she said, and they, she said, they said, what do you, what don't you like about our church? She says, there's one thing I don't like. She says, it takes six more days before I get to come back. Now if that ain't a, a, a honest, blessed idea of what they said. She said, I can't wait to come back to church. Amen. How many of you can't wait to get back here? Oh, yeah. Amen. I see one hand. Yeah. 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 <laughs> because you know the blessing of God ought to be here. You ought to have the presence of God. If you can't get love no place else, it ought to be here. Because we're the people of love. We were born into love. We were granted with love. We got the spirit of love. We got to activate it. Amen. Wherever you go, because you got to get that love over there so that people want to come over here with you here. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. And so it is the foundation of what we believe in. That's why I'm trusting that we'll soon begin to rise up greater love than what we have. Yeah. Amen. 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 Then, then go a little further. Then he says, uh, rooted and grounded love uh, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, uh, and to know the love of Christ. So he says he wants to know all dimensions of God's love. That's what the spirit of love is going to do for you. Amen. Then it goes on. He says, "I don't even know that," but he says, "And that ye, and that that ye, uh, and, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, and that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God." Amen. How many people on earth has ever had the fullness of God? Besides Jesus. The Bible says he had the, he the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And so you and I are called to walk in the fullness of God. How do I get the fullness of God? By walking in his love. Loving God and loving his people. When Jesus did this, he opened up the door. He was like a plus sign standing on the top of the earth. On, on, on that Golgotha hill. And he was reaching up into heaven and reaching out to man. And by his blood, it made a way for the two to be reconnected. That's why when we go over there and we look in this situation where this sinner woman came into the Pharisee's house. How she got in there, I do not know. Because she was not supposed to be in a righteous man's house. She was a sinner woman. It doesn't say that she was a Gentile. It doesn't say that she did not have a covenant with God. She was probably a Jewish woman. I don't want to say that she was a, a prostitute, but she was identified as a sinner. Everybody who was a sinner and was devil, devil possessed were not, were not based on a sexual sin. So Mary Magdalene, they said she had seven demons and Jesus cast them out. I kind of believe this might have been the beginning of Mary Magdalene relationship with Christ. I don't know. But I do know this. She was a sinner. I do, do know this. When she came into the house, she began to break open her the best that she had because she loved him. And she poured it over his head and poured it on his feet. And it was riches that was considered by anybody else to be a waste. But this woman pours it out on him. And the way that they sat, I can't do that now, but they were on the floor. 
And either they were laying down, or he was on his knees, his feet were behind him, his head was right, and she came up behind him, and she began to pour it out on him. And she poured it out on him, weeping with her tears. And then she took, she took her tears, and she began to, to wash his hair with, his, with, with her hair, her tears, and, 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 and her feet, his feet, she, she was bent down crying and weeping. I don't hear what she said anything to Jesus. She didn't quote any scriptures. She just came in weeping. When your heart is right, Jesus knows your heart. Amen. She doesn't say a word. For the love of God. Do you know one thing? When you find a place where Jesus is, ask when he walked on the earth. Do you know nobody ever died in Jesus' presence? Nobody died. And they brought the whole city to him. In many cases, he heals everybody. He didn't ask them, where had you been to the temple? He didn't ask them, had you had communion? He didn't ask them, had they paid tithes? He didn't ask them, had you asked God for forgiveness? He just healed everybody. Nobody died. And when he found somebody who was dead, he rose them up. Because he says, I am Amen. the resurrection and the life. Right. And when you get Jesus in your life, Everything's supposed to change. Everything's supposed to come alive. Everything's supposed to have the power of God, which you should have, and the power of his love, the spirit of his love, and the spirit of a sound mind. He's given that to everyone who believes. Yes, the power of God. This woman came in weeping. And, 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 and this Pharisee said within his heart, he knew her heart, and he knew his heart. He says, if this man's supposed to be a prophet, doesn't he know? And this is a sinner woman, and she's touching him. See, the problem is, when a sinner touches a prophet, when a sinner, sinner touches a, a, a priest, or any kind of priest, that they became defiled. You can't go back in the temple. But don't you know that that's God? He's not just some average man. God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world to themselves. And so this love was there. God's love was there. God's love will cover a multitude of sins. That's what Proverbs says. I wonder if I have anybody who's been messing up in here. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody who's done anything wrong? Is there anybody who's still holding on to their past sin? All you got to do is find the feet of Jesus. Amen. Just find his feet. Begin to cry out to him. Lord, have mercy. In fact, if you just go someplace and sit in the presence of God, he recognizes right now who you are and where you are right now. Amen. God is awesome. Amen. He loves to love you. Yes. And now when you can begin to think of this, God loves me. Yes. God loves me. Yes. God loves me. God loves me. Amen. You begin to think, well, hey, I'm blessed. Amen. I mean blessed. Yes. I mean he gave me everything. Yes. He gave me his favor. He gave me his grace. Yes. He gave me his son. He gave me his love. Amen. He gave me life. He loves me. Amen. He loves me. Think about it now. How many of you got children that you really like? I ain't talking about the bad <laughs> And you got everything in your hands. Now wouldn't you give them everything? Yes. And wouldn't you bless them before they ask for it? Amen. And wouldn't you make arrangements that when they, if you had enough money, I have a friend of mine, yes. who has enough money, enough uh, uh, credentials, that he calls the bank and he tells the bank, I want you to make a, a to allow my son to borrow $3 million for his business. And so his son went to the bank thinking that he had his own ability. He was going to do it by himself. So he goes down there and comes back. Man, Dad, I went down there and put my name, my name down and I filled out the paperwork. And you guess what? They gave me $3.5 million. Like $3 million. Because a good father that has the blessing will bless you ahead of time. And when you get there, you'll find there's a blessing. And when you can understand that God loves you, Amen. then that's not how it's going to work. I'm not telling you when the end times come. And this it must be the end times right now, baby, because it's happening all the time. If you believe that God loves you, all you got to do is say it enough. As you often think all the time that you're a loser. I'm just for me. And you keep saying it and you keep acting like it. Amen. Don't ever tell, some, tell your child what the teacher said about them as if it's negative. If, they, if, you, if, you, if your teacher tells, your, tells you your child is a slow learner, don't tell that child that. And don't let that child be in the, in the, in the, in the area where their teacher is saying that. Amen. Or anybody else. Amen. I don't care what they say. Amen. The devil is a liar. Amen. 
What is your faith? You're going to agree with what the world and the devil has said about your children? You're going to accept that foolishness? The devil is a liar. Pray for them. Do all fight for them, not with them. You got to understand this. When I correct you, I love you. And I ain't going to let you go. I'm going to stay right here. I may have to let you do what you do. But I love you. Every time I tell you, I, every time I see you, I love you. Are you understanding me, what I'm saying? Amen. It's what God says. He loves you. Yes. Loves you. Yes. So this woman, to the, to the man, he begins to say, if he only knew who she was. Mm. Then Jesus wow. says, I need to ask you a question, son. Uh, there was a man who had two debtors. One who owed 500 pence and one who owed 50. And he forgave them both. Which do you think would love him the most? He says, I suppose, the one who he forgave the most. He says, you have rightly judged. He says, this woman who came into, my, into your house and came in after I had come in, she has not ceased to wash my feet with her tears and to wipe them with the hairs of her head. He says, you know that our custom is that when a stranger, anybody comes into your house, you're supposed to give them oil to wipe their face. And you're supposed to give them, have your servant come and wash their feet. You didn't wash my feet, but this woman who was a sinner, who has no right to the blessings of God, because she's out of God's will, she came in loving me. Praise God. Church, we need to correct ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Can you love and got Jesus in your house? Hallelujah. Amen. Are you so good and you so right that you can't allow the Spirit of God, the Spirit of His love to live in your life? I pray the day is changed in the church. I know it's already changed here. But God will begin to use the Spirit of love. In this. He, gets, he says, if you get that Spirit of love, He will give you more than you can ask or say according to the power that works in us. What is the power working inside of us? It is the Spirit of God's love. It's that same love put Jesus on that cross. That same love caused him to stay there. Because he could have come down. He says, I could call down 12 legions of angels to deliver me right here, but I choose not to. And in the midst of it, he says, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. I can imagine that when the nail nails in his hands, he wasn't cussing. He just laid there. When they beat him in his back, he had to every now and then look in the face of the man who, was, who had no whip, snatching the skin off his back. He had to say, go ahead. Amen. If he didn't say it verbally, he said it in his heart. Go ahead. I'm doing this for Karen. I'm doing this for Rosalind. I'm doing this for Matt. I'm doing this for the Christian life. Son. I'm bleeding for them because I'm healing them right now. I'm doing this for every sin that you ever commit. Let them kill me. Let them nail nails in my feet wherever, I, wherever you should have gone and you did not go and it led you into sin. I'm dying for that. The crowns on his head, the slaps in his face, because he takes away your shame. He takes away your sorrow. He is God. And God paid a price in which we are absolutely unworthy of, undeserving of. And he took his righteousness and put it on us and took our sins and put it on him and make the great transaction. That was love. So now, if Jesus has forgiven us of this, why can't we take this love and use the spirit of love and let it be our confidence? All you got to do, ask the Holy Ghost when you leave your house or when you wake up in the morning, give me the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and the spirit of the sound. Give God praise. Thank you, Jesus.